Welcome to today's episode of Places, People, Purpose. In today's episode, we're going to talk about one of the most iconic landmarks in Paris. Can you guess what that is? Well, maybe, but it's not easy, is it? I could be talking about the Notre Dame Cathedral, the Eiffel Tower, the Champs-Élysées, the L'Arc de Triomphe, the Louvre, the Basilica of Sacré-Cœur in Montmartre, the Opera House, and more. One of the wonderful things about Paris is that there is such an amazing array of places to experience and learn about. The city is truly larger than life in how it presents itself, with iconic edifices and monuments seemingly at every corner. It is such a rich environment for history, culture, and enchantment. For today, our focus will be on the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower, or La Tour Eiffel, is definitely one of the most iconic landmarks, not just in Paris, but in the entire world. And it is a true symbol of France. So today, we're going to look at the rich history and background of this monument. The concept for the Eiffel Tower originated as part of the preparations for the 1889 Exposition Universelle or World's Fair in Paris, which was held to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. The French government announced a competition for the design of a prominent iron structure that would be the centerpiece of the exposition. The winning design was submitted by the engineering firm of Gustave Eiffel, a renowned French civil engineer whose company specialized in building metal frameworks and structures. Eiffel was known mostly for his work building bridges and viaducts, such as the viaducts in Porto, Portugal and Garbi, France, and his works reflect that he was a master at metal framework. Some of his most well-known buildings are the Budapest Nugati train station in Hungary and the Dome of the Nice Observatory. Construction of the Eiffel Tower began in 1887 and took just over two years to complete. An interesting fact is that the Eiffel Tower is made of iron, not steel. It is called puddle iron because the iron goes through a refining process called puddling, where all of the excess carbon is eliminated when the ore is melted. The result of this process is that it yields an almost pure form of iron. Eiffel thought that this was the strongest and best material available at the time of construction, so that's what he used. The puddle iron that makes up the Eiffel Tower structure came from Pompeii forges located east of France. The iron plates and beams produced through the puddling process were then pre-assembled in the Eiffel factories using rivets. After pre-assembly, the pieces were taken to the Eiffel Tower construction site to be mounted. Eiffel's company oversaw the construction and it was built using more than 18,000 individual iron pieces and over 2.5 million rivets. This prefab system is what allowed the Eiffel Tower to be built in a record time of two years, two months, and five days. This was remarkable speed and efficiency for its time. Even more remarkable is that all of this was done without serious injuries or deaths during the construction process. So where did the design of the Eiffel Tower come from? 
If you look at the projects that Eiffel's company was working on before the Eiffel Tower, some of the largest projects were viaducts. The towers for these viaducts reflect the familiar A-shape that was ultimately displayed in the Eiffel Tower. So when the engineers in Eiffel's company began designing a metal tower that was 300 meters high for the 1889 World's Fair, it did have a similarity to other projects they had worked on. And this resulted in the now famous shape of the Eiffel Tower, where you have a structure with four legs, each made of four heavy-duty beams linked together by a web of joists that rise diagonally to meet the summit. And this tower is a behemoth, weighing in at approximately 10,100 tons. The metal framework alone weighs 7,300 tons. To protect it from corrosion, the iron is covered with a thick coat of paint that has to be renewed every seven years. This repainting schedule was recommended by Gustave Eiffel himself and is still respected to date. Just the paint that protects the structure weighs 60 tons. First referred to as the 300 meter tower, it soon after took the name of the man who built it, Gustave Eiffel. The tower opened to the public the same day as the World's Fair on May 15, 1889. Eiffel's masterpiece aimed to show the world the brilliance of the French in the industrial and technological areas at the occasion of the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. There were mixed reactions from the public and the artistic community both before and during the Eiffel Tower's construction. Some of the published satirical comments included this truly tragic street lamp, this belfry skeleton, and this mess of iron gymnasium apparatus, incomplete, confused, and deformed. Its peculiar iron silhouette instantly traveled across the world in the newspapers. But thanks to the genius of its architecture and design, visitors and Parisians immediately fell under its charm, and more than two billion people toured the Eiffel Tower in its first year. It's hard to believe now that originally the Eiffel Tower was intended to be a temporary structure and be only in place for 20 years. But in the years following its completion, the tower was put to different uses, including as a scientific laboratory for meteorological and astronomical research. It also played a role in early experiments with wireless telegraphy. The fact that the tower proved to be a valuable asset for wireless communication and radio transmissions ultimately saved it from demolition in the early 1900s. Subsequently, the tower was used for military radio interception and transmission during both World War I and World War II. Amazingly, it survived both conflicts relatively unscathed. After World War II, the Eiffel Tower has continued to be an enduring symbol of Paris and France. It has undergone various renovations and modernizations to ensure its safety and attractiveness to tourists. When the Eiffel Tower was constructed, it was the first tower to reach the height of 1,000 feet, which was twice as tall as any structure previously erected. It remained the highest building in the world for the next 40 years. In fact, it wasn't until the Empire State Building was erected in New York in 1931 that the Eiffel Tower lost its title of tallest building in the world. 
From 1889 and on, the Eiffel Tower has been continuously open for visits, except during World War II and the COVID-19 pandemic. Thanks to its universal power of attraction, it's one of the most visited monuments in the entire world, drawing millions of tourists annually. It has three floors in total, all of which are open to visitors. The first two floors are accessible by stairs and an elevator, while the top level, or summit, must be climbed by steps. The first two floors feature restaurants and cafes, while on each level there is an observational deck for looking out onto the city of Paris. Yes, the views are spectacular. The restaurant on the second floor was constructed in 1983. It is called the Jules Verne Restaurant in honor of the famous French novelist and spokesperson for literary, scientific, and industrial progress. Since October 1, 2018, triple Michelin-starred chef Frédéric Anton has taken the helm of this legendary restaurant where the view is always unique, both day and night. After significant renovations, the restaurant reopened to the public in the summer of 2019. It has become a must-see and taste spot in the culinary circles of Paris. Interestingly, Eiffel's company also built the metal framework for another very famous monument, and that is the Statue of Liberty, which was designed by Frederick Auguste Bartholdi and gifted by France to the United States in celebration of the 100th anniversary of the American Declaration of Independence in 1886. What an amazing career of accomplishments for this master builder. No wonder he earned a nickname of the Magician of Iron. The Eiffel Tower is often illuminated with various colors and patterns on special occasions and holidays. For example, on October 1st, the tower was illuminated in pink for the launch of the annual breast cancer campaign. The pink lighting has been used each year since 2014 to raise breast cancer awareness. It has also been used as a backdrop for countless cultural events, celebrations, and public gatherings. The Eiffel Tower's history is a testament to the enduring appeal of this iconic structure, which has gone from being a subject of controversy and skepticism to becoming a beloved symbol of France and a marvel of engineering and architecture. Well, that's all we have for today's episode of Places, People, Purpose. I know I learned a number of new things in researching the history and construction of this amazing monument. Hopefully, you did too. In our next episode, we will still be in France learning more about this amazing city. So please join us for our next episode of Places, People, Purpose where we create connections to our world.